guys welcome back to another m creator building tutorial so last episode when we worked on the cabin build i basically had some troubles actually getting it to work uh over the weekend what i worked on was basically getting a, a script set up that it would basically work now with some exceptions i couldn't spawn in the bottom piece because i didn't have enough time to but um the whole point is I did get the whole top part to actually generate. The one issue that I did notice though <clears throat> is um, the structures, the larger they get, uh, the more demand for flat area there is. So because this location is actually very flat, there's uh, plains right here, there's no lakes there, it's pretty much perfect where it needs to spawn uh, with the exception of just a little bit of a layer right here. Now I have adjusted the offset a little bit so it can kind of fit into the rough area where it needs to. I think it's about one or two blocks above and below where the terrain difference can be. So that's basically what's happened here is it's basically um, looked for a uh, one to uh, one or two block difference like this one right here and it's found a um, area that it could basically spawn it in now without that it would basically have really hard time to actually find a place with the train to actually spawn in so this is partly why it's in the middle of a river <laughs> it's um kind of needed because of the space and it just happened to be the lo location where it needed to be. Uh, now let's uh, go around and we'll see if we can't find another one. Uh, I'm not sure there will be one anywhere nearby. They're kind of rare um, to say the least so I would, I would actually be really surprised if we did find one but uh, we'll, we'll try still and if not then that's okay too. There is some... Um, a lot of forests now it's not i made sure that it wasn't limited to just forests so there's a good chance that there will be um another one somewhere around here it just needs a lot of flat area to actually spawn you could increase the um the actual spawn radius or the not the, the spawn structure count and it should increase the chances of it spawning uh, deserts are sort of flat. We might be able to find one or two in here. There's a desert temple. Uh, we'll just keep flying one direction and hopefully we find something. Yeah, but um, it was just a fluke that I found that one. I was just traveling through that area and ended up finding one. This looks pretty flat. We'll check out this area. There's a village. And I'm not seeing any other one. Try over on this side. But yeah, um, it basically does generate. It's just extremely rare, like I said, uh, because of the terrain difference, because there's so many different hills and stuff uh, mixed in with all this stuff. It makes it hard for it to actually find a spot. Like, you could probably fit bare minimum one right in here, but because I have only one structure spawning, it's uh, extremely rare for that to happen. So, I could increase that and it should be able to generate naturally. Uh, we'll do that and then try it again, but um, yeah, I don't think we're going to find another one, honestly. Not until we do that. So. Just gonna fly down this side of the coast, and if we can't find one, then I'll just go into M Crater, and I'll show you basically the script. So yeah, desert temple. A lot of desert temples in this area, that's for sure. Okay, I don't think this is flat enough in this area for spawning one. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to find one. All right, that's fine. Um. We'll go into M Crater now, and then I'll show you the script that I did use to get it to generate, and then we can add a few more structures. Hopefully that will make it a little bit more common. 
Uh, we can also increase the spawn count a little bit. I think it's only at like 100,000 right now, so we might be able to increase that as well. And that might help with the um, rarity of it. Um, but I didn't want it to overcrowd the area either, so um, I only had one particular structure to spawn. But uh, yeah, alright, so let's go into Amp Crater and then we'll take a look at that quickly. And then we'll hop back in game after we make some changes. Alright, so there is a couple different procedures that we have here. So, oh, pardon me. <laughs> we have only uh, three procedures, but we need to take a look at the uh, tags that we have. So there's spawnable and not ground. Uh, spawnable is basically anything that the block, the structure can basically fill in. Um, this will make sense when we actually take a look at the additional conditions uh, for the actual structure. But it basically has all the different types of flowers, grass, anything that is basically replaceable, logs, leaves, and uh, both air blocks as well, or all three air blocks. So basically that's all the different type of things that it can basically spawn in as. So everything that's basically foliage and um, some other things like air this is going to be really important now it is under spawnable and the tag name is uh tag namespace is log the mod namespace so it is uh log cabin build and then it's under the block um block uh tag type and then the other one is very similar um it is uh not ground uh or not underscore ground the tag namespace is the same as the mod, and then what I'm doing is basically for the tag type is the blocks and then the elements that basically should be um, for it to happen is all the air types. Now I could have just used the material, but I decided not to because I needed to do some other testing with it to see if I could uh, make th some things work, but it just turns out that I just need air. All right, so let's go into the additional condition and we'll take a look at this. So the first thing that we're doing is testing if the um, area is basically outside of the spawn chunks. For some reason, um, having the chunks generate, uh, like preload in the spawn chunks actually cause some issues. It freezes the game. So I had to basically add this part in to basically make sure that it was spawning outside. Uh, I believe before I tried 124, 1024, but it only turns out that you need 512 uh, for the distance and you need to test for any of these conditions. So either it's this one, that one, that one, or that one, or a multiple of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's why we're using the or statements here. Uh, basically, if it's x is greater than 512 or is x is less than negative 512, then what it's going to do is basically spawn in. Or if it's basically z greater than 512 or z less than uh, negative 512, then it's going to spawn in, run this particular script. So with that being said, uh, we've basically set the uh, local variable. Uh, the local va variables are pause x and pause z. This is set to our x and z coordinate, which is the x and z location of the actual structure that uh, we're basically generating this additional condition from. Then we have a couple repeaters here. What these do is it basically allows us to run the script repeatedly. When we put it in a system like this and then have our, um, basically our counter, what this will do is it will count up 64 times or the number of the repeater up here. And once it's finished, it'll go back into the main repeater and it will reset Z and then it will basically count up one and then it will go ahead and start with the repeater again and then basically go through uh, 64 more times until it reaches 64 by 64. So basically that's what's going on here. Now the inner part of here is where our script actually is. This is what we're actually running to basically test if there is spawnable area. So 
Uh, let's see if I can cover this a little bit easier to understand. So each one of these particular um, blocks right here are uh, different levels of where it's basically testing for. Uh, this top one, uh, the log cabin build not ground is basically the um, condition where we're testing if the blocks below are solid. So if it's not an air block and we want to basically spawn it in. Um, for example, the one below it is spawnable. So it's basically the block above. And if any of the blocks above can be um, any type of material, such as um, foliage, trees, things like that, grass, uh, ferns, things like that. So if it's any of one of those things above, then it will be able to spawn. However, it shouldn't have um, any particular terrain difference in that area. So for example, uh, with this one right up here, it's basically saying, okay, make sure that nothing below the structure is air. And then this one is basically going, okay, is there any replaceable blocks that we can actually exclude and just replace with our structure? So this is what that one does. Now, the reason why there are five different versions of this is uh, there is um, a larger chance to have a terrain offset a little bit. So if it's a little bit under the, um, say there's, uh, we spawn it in, and it dips down a little bit in the terrain and maybe a little bit up, then it can actually flatten that out a little bit to make it some compensation for it. So it'll spawn it at the lowest part and then basically it'll adjust the terrain a little bit. So um, that's basically what's going on here. Uh, the difference is uh, the location. So this would be the center block where it actually spawns. And then there is negative one of the actual uh, Y coordinate of the relative structure location. This is negative two, this is positive one, and then positive two. So basically it has a five block area buffer zone where it can actually spawn the structure. Uh, below uh, what's going on is the um, don't spawn structure. We wanna set this to true if it uh, can actually spawn. And if it finds something that it can't actually spawn in, then what it's going to do is use the else statement, set the don't spawn to true, and break out of the loop. So when it breaks out of the loop, what it's going to do is bypass this coordinate, and then it's going to go to this, and it's already set to true, so it's gonna break out of that loop, bypass these coordinates, and then it's gonna bypass this, because this needs to be false, and then it's just gonna return false so it doesn't spawn so that's basically what's going on here. Uh, you can find all the different blocks. Uh, let's see, where are all the different types of blocks? So we have the X and Z uh, coordinates, which are under the Minecraft components. So it's these two right here. And then we got uh, the not statement for this, which is under logic, and then there's not. Uh, there's also the true and false ones, which are also under logic right here. We also got the dark blue operators, which are these ones. And then we got our variables, which are under local vari or the custom variables. And then we got the uh, local variable. You need to set the local variable up here. Uh, we also need um, don't spawn uh, logic variable. So that would be under logic. And the other ones are number. And then you basically set that as the same name as those. Uh, the other things that we have are math operators. These are used in these parts here to offset the coordinates. So that's basically what's going on here. Uh, you can actually click on the thing and set it to negative if you need to go negative coordinates. And uh, then we've got our and statement. That's the light blue operator. You can actually set this to and like that. And there's also or here as well. And then we got See, what else do we got? We got um, our if statement, so that's under the flow control. You can place that down like that. And to make an else statement, uh, what you want to do is actually click on the little gear icon up here. You can add different conditions like this for if else, and then you can add a series of conditions, and then after you can basically add an else statement, and that will be the last 
thing that runs regardless if any of the other conditions above do not return true. So that's basically what we have set up here. Uh, repeaters can be found under flow control and you will need a number from math and to set the actual size of the structure with and you can actually put that inside like that and then it will run the repeater inside of the repeater uh, this for the, the count of the main repeater so 64 times this will run and then 65 four times this inside this repeater will run so it's basically 64 times 64 um, and then we got the tag block thing. So if we go to blocks and then there's this block right here and I basically just put our tag name in here. This is our mod namespace because it's under the mod uh, namespace and for the tag and then the tag name. So basically replace Minecraft with your mod tag or mod namespace and then your tag name after where logs is. Uh, the other thing that we have in here is if you scroll all the way down, there is get block at and then the coordinates. And what I've done is I've basically got this in here and then I've basically replaced these with the variables for get and you can find that under this section right here. And you can basically just update this like that. So that's basically what's going on in this particular procedure. Not too much going on, but it's still uh, very important for this system to work. All right, moving on. So the other uh, condition is uh, when the structure instance generated. So this is under the structure. When it actually generates the structure, we what we want to do is basically um, update and notify block. Now there is a custom block that we have um, set up here. There is a puzzle block, which I'm basically going to be updating. And then it's at the actual axis point where the structure is going to be spawning. And then what's going to actually happen is what we're doing is we're going to schedule tick update at block of block at and then we're going to set this to zero tick. So basically what this will do is it'll start the cycle for the update tick after the block generates. Now it's important to have that at your bottom northwest corner if you're going to um, set it up exactly the same, whoop, wrong one, exactly the same way as this at the X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. So it needs to be at the very bottom um, corner where the block is. Now we do do some changing here. Uh, we do replace that block with the grass block after. Uh, this script here is the blocks update tick. So when it actually does get triggered for the update tick, what it's going to do is it's going to set the position of X, position of Y, and position of Z to the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then what we're going to do is we're basically going to set a repeater for four and then four. Now that will be the area of how many chunks that we're basically going to take over. Now there's two chunks in 32 by 32, so that's like um, two by two for the actual chunks. And because there is 64 by 64, that makes four uh, areas where we need to test this area for. Uh, we also have a local variable. Now if you have the um, chunk manager plugin, you will need this to actually load in the chunks but if you create a chunk and then just say like my chunk or whatever and this uh, for the variable name that's what I've set up here and then you want to set the variable to the current position of the ch uh, actual location for the chunk itself so what I've basically done is I've just basically run it from the x y and z relative where the axis point of the chunk is or the the block that's basically running it and then I'm going to force load that chunk. So I basically take the local variable and then I'm turning it to true to basically load it. And then what's going to happen is the Z is going, position Z is going to increase by 16. So it's in the next chunk over. And then what it's going to do is basically repeat that process. So it's going to load that chunk in. And after it reaches one row, so four times, it's going to reset Z to the regular access point for the structure. And then it's going to increase X by 16. So it's going to do basically four times four. 
and load all those chunks in where the structure needs to be actually placed. Now that's great. Uh, the next thing that we actually need to do is spawn in all those structures. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to spawn in the structure for this main building. And that's what this one is for. That's why it's X, Y, and Z and no offset. Then we have the um, house southwest side, which basically takes X and then basically increases that by 32 to spawn it in the, um, basically where it needs to be for the X position. And then the other one is Z, which is the northeast. And then the last one is southeast, which is both these conditions here. After we're basically replacing the um, puzzle block with a grass block and not having it keep the MBT data or the state just so it basically cycles and then after we're doing basically the exact same thing up here but instead what we're doing is we're going to basically set the force chunk to false and that's going to disable the chunks from being loaded uh, just remember that it needs to be at the access point of where relative to where the actual structure is spawning in from and make sure that your um, coordinates are always positive where they're actually going to be spawning and that you're just on the positive side it just makes this system a little bit easier to work with uh, if it's outside of the area then it's not going to basically have a chance to actually spawn it all in so it's very coordinate based um, it's best to kind of check where it's going uh, to actually place it. If you keep it on the positive coordinates, it'll be easier than trying to go in the negative and offset it all, that kind of stuff. So that's just kind of basically the script that basically generates the structures. Uh, the other thing that we have is the actual structure itself. So this is the additional condition, which is that one right here. And then we have the on structure generated so this is basically this one right here uh, for updating the block at that act that puzzle block and uh, the block itself is just a generic block I didn't need any it for anything else the tick rate is set to 1 and the tile entity basically has zero inventory but MBT enabled and uh, everything else is disabled and then triggers it just has an update tick to basically set that up and then what i wanted to do was basically try to increase the spawn um spawn amount for the structure so what we can do is i only have it at uh okay i actually have it less than 100. so what we can do is we can increase this to say 500 thousand and we'll see if it helps with uh, it basically spawning in. So we'll save this and then we'll check in game. And if not, then we'll increase it to a million. And then if that still doesn't, then we'll create another structure and test that out. All right, so we're basically loading in a brand new structure or pardon me, brand new world. So it's gonna just generate and then we'll basically go in and take a look around. So hopefully, Everything will run perfectly fine. Looks like we can get in there just fine. That's good. All right, so let's try to find at least a couple structures to see if we can't find uh, one or two of them. Uh, we did increase the amount to 500,000, so that should help with that a little bit. Um, generally, they used to spawn over in this area from what I remember. Uh, there was one that spawned somewhere in here before, so I'm not sure if it's going to spawn. Uh, the more probability that the structure is spawning, the higher chance of it basically um, the structures can actually change in location. So we'll go this way. We'll see if we can't find one somewhere over here. There's a jungle over here, and I think there's a passage over to... Is this the area or was it somewhere further down? I can't remember. I think the mountain biomes and then it goes into plains. Could be wrong. Yeah, there's plains over here. So these ones are actually pretty flat. Uh, we might be able to find one or two over here. And 
should have spawned in there possibly but there is some caves in that area so it's possible that it would didn't have enough room and let's go over here we'll just check this out Doesn't look like there's any there uh, we'll go this way there's one all right so that one actually spawned uh completely on land uh you can kind of see how it's basically set up oh there's another one over there perfect all right so this is a great example of how it's basically spawning in. Uh, it's finding that difference where it basically placed the block itself. So, for example, it had a two block difference and it just were oddly enough missing a house there. <laughs> is, is that spreading? I'm not sure if that just spread or not. It shouldn't have be like that. Not sure what's going on there. Let's go to this one. Oh, there's another one over there. Okay then. Uh, it could have just spawned inside the other one. That's quite possible. Like something like this. Or maybe it's generating... I was having a very similar issue with it before doing something very similar to this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's um, the block isn't being replaced properly or what's going on, but um, sometimes with larger structures like this, they'll spawn close together. And there's also another probability of it actually spreading sometimes. Um, I think this is just a case of it basically spawning in once and then the other the next option was for it to spawn in at the similar location um, that's why I had the rarity a lot down so that's the only issue with that like this one turned out perfectly fine probably because there was no other probable area for it to generate around the structure so it's it's kind of like if you want to actually get it to spawn um, in more probably like more frequently then you have to make some adjustments to the actual height difference more or less than the actual um, probability of it spawning because you'll get stuff like this with the structures basically spawning in it wherever it can basically fit it in with and that causes some issues. Uh, let's continue flying around and we'll just uh, take a look see if there's any other structures we can find maybe in the swamps or something uh, We'll just see Probably not gonna be any in the swamps or maybe there is this one looks like it's actually flooded <laughs> This one's completely flooded. That's kind of cool But uh, yeah, I guess again, you can basically see that it spawns in where it can basically go Um where there's room now there isn't any other extra room around that it can actually place the structure in so it only spawned one um the other place was probably there was a couple different spawn locations that it could fit one in i'll try a little bit further over this way we'll see if there's any in the actual forest there might not be forests are generally generally uh have a lot more uneven terrain so larger structures like this might not work uh, this one looks like it spawned in two places this one looks like it spawned in one and the other one I think because it's over the ocean it probably spawned in two or three different ones here so that's probably what's going on there I will check out the de desert and there's one over there uh, probably two looks like two of them Okay, so Not sure what's going on there. I don't think this one's actually spawned in properly Might have um... Okay, I think what happened was this one spawned in first and then basically this one right here basically spawned in but uh, it had room to spawn, but it didn't have room for the other ones to spawn. That's quite possible. So it, it's basically like if you can find flat areas and you're okay with the terrain difference, then you can basically spawn that in. But when you start adding more probability than of it actually spawning, then you have some like 
glitchy structures and stuff because it's actually using chunks. Uh, there is sadly no way to actually go around doing that without needing other mods for dependency and stuff like that. But um, as you can see, it's all here. We have our, our structures and it's fully decorated and stuff like that. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video by clicking the thumbs up button, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.